if Tesla fails this range for the third time around, you're probably going to get a really big signal in the overall marketplace. Because again, as far as I know. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a good week of trading and hopefully everybody is having a great weekend. So uh, let's talk about the tape. Um, S&P, Dow Jones Industrials down about a little bit less than a half of a percent. The NASDAQ 100 kind of a, in the middle of this really, really uh, you know, important earnings season down about one, you know, one percent or so. Not a big deal, right? I, I think overall uh, the market has been really strong. The action has been su just superb action, especially in the meat and potatoes of technology, especially this last remount uh, that happened July the nineteenth. So we've seen really, really strong uh, moves. Now again, we've had some mixed earnings, uh, some mixed earnings in semiconductors. So for example. Texas Instruments uh, didn't do well, right? At least on earnings, climb, climb back. Uh, Intel gapped down. And then you have the names that did very, very well. Clack on Friday uh, was a monster, absolutely monster. Can we give, can we give a round of applause on AMD for again, five years, more, a little more than that. Seven, eight years ago, AMD was trading, maybe it was even 10 years ago, AMD was trading like five dollars okay uh the company looked like it was in its last leg and about to go to zero and the only thing they didn't say one earnings announcement this was years and years and years ago they just didn't use the word chapter 11. and look at them now right look at them now absolutely amazing uh what they completely redid with the company uh and you got to give kudos to all the management the ceo and everybody else as far as execution they did incredibly well and if you told me uh, 10 years ago that this thing was going to be 100 bucks a share, I, I would have thought you needed stronger pills uh, than my mother-in-law needed. So really, really strong action there. Um, you have a lot of really big mixed earnings in other places. IBM, right? IBM had a you know decent quarter. Uh, Netflix didn't really do anything. Microsoft, you know, it was okay, right? Microsoft did okay, but nothing, you know, nothing earth shattering. Facebook was disappointing. And the reason why Facebook was disappointing, because they're in the same business, right? The whole ad point to click customer acquisition. And if you look what Snap did, right? And if you look what Twitter did, and you look what Google did, you can see why Facebook's earnings were very, very disappointing. Apple, you know, again, not here nor there, really didn't react to earnings that much, down a little bit, but now it's kind of flagging here uh, to kind of go back up. And we started to finally see some pretty good uh, option flow in the name, good money flow, especially towards the afternoon on Friday. So this is, might be one of those scenarios that, you know, they got through earnings, they weren't great, they weren't good, but it's okay, right? They're still in the range Technically, and if they start reclaiming, especially the five-day moving average, uh, it's going to start moving higher. And we did see um, we did see August and September uh, 150, 155, 160 call buyers. So we're starting to see some uh, call activity ramp up uh, in the name. The shocking one, and I think anybody would admit to that, was Amazon, right? I, I don't think uh, any trader ever turned around and said, you know what? I'm shorting Amazon at the earnings, they're gonna miss their numbers, right? I just don't think so. I, I, I've never, I don't think I've ever said that in my life. And they were down 7%. And if you look at the failure with Intel, uh, Microsoft, Facebook, and Apple, the common denominator were in that failure, even Netflix, the common denominator was the market didn't sell off, okay? It just did not sell off. Technology didn't sell off. It was very stock specific and they bought the dip. And when it came down to Amazon, when it was down, you know, 272 points or seven, you know, seven percent on the day, it really kind of showed a ripple effect. But here's this, you know, here's the curveball. As weak as we thought was the session going to, and this was kind of going to change the narrative in the Nasdaq 100, the common denominator played out again. They still held the bottom of the range. 
they still bought the market and a lot of names that were very very strong like the day before and we'll get to the and we'll get to the pivots in a second like the Teslas of the world that started the pre-market session down seven eight points like AMD was down like a dollar and a half or so um, you know names like that they woke up they had their day two runs and they did incredibly incredibly well so the question was uh, I forgot who asked me the question in the afternoon uh, but somebody asked me well, well Dan are, are you getting a little bit nervous about what's going on in the world and my first response was well how can you overthink something right uh, price action is everything news on the surface is is news on the surface until somebody reacts to it and the more I thought about it right the more I thought about it I'm still thinking about it now there's there's definitely some concern we'll get to that in a second as of right now as of right now going into Monday's session I have to continue to give the Bulls the benefit of the doubt the only reason why is they keep on neglect kind of deflecting I don't want to use the neglecting neflect deflecting bad news and what's that bad news okay um, a month ago in New Jersey I live in New Jersey a month ago we were down to like a hundred hundred and fifty cases a day for COVID right now we have the new Delta strain um, I looked this morning as of like five hours ago we were like 1100 for yesterday right that's a, you know that's a it's a big big move uh, in just a month um, you have your continuing saga between China and all these US based companies that are really getting a shoot first shoot second shoot third ask questions later uh, type of scenario and that market and a lot of investors are kind of bailing out of that tape right and now if you look at uh, the Asian markets you know they're starting to go down as well so we can't be and again I, and I say this and I'm trying to use the word and I'm trying to be as adult about it as possible it's not it's not like it's my way or the highway I'm trying to be as adult about it as possible I still recognize there's a lot of really great macro setups uh, ahead for this week, right? The Tesla macro and the video macro. Um, I like Apple if it starts waking up. We'll get into the digital days in a second, but I'm also not naive. I, I, I get the idea we've been deflecting bad news. That's bullish. I get that part. I get the idea that we've been more or less deflecting uh, what's been going on with China and the Asian markets are starting to come down and I get it. And the uh, Delta variant is getting stronger and stronger and easier to uh, transmit. I get that. And for now, it's not a problem, right? It's not a problem. It's not a problem until it becomes a problem. And I think that's the most important part. It's like saying buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip works all the time until it doesn't. And I think we have to go into this week with a good bullish bias but just understand and keep an eye, right? Just an eyeball on what's happening, everything else. And we have to start looking for clues. What are the clues we're gonna look for are if stocks are getting upgrade, they don't go up. If futures rally and they don't participate. If stocks have a buyer strike, although the market continues to be good, these are all signs that a rolling short-term top are happening. Am I saying it's gonna happen this week? No, again, like I said in the beginning, I'm bullish going into this week until those dips stop getting bought until those upgrades are being sold until those stocks that have a great chart on a macro basis get stuffed at the top of the range despite all the bullish activity that's on the surface so we have to start looking out for those signs to start playing keep an eye out open for any particular news that is going to exaggerate some of the issues uh, that i just talked about in the last few minutes and be cautious is it the most prudent thing in the world again I'm doing this update it's uh, 12 o'clock it's 10 to 1 right uh, it's 10 to 1 uh, it's Saturday uh, Saturday July 31st it's, it's 1 o'clock in, in, in pretty much in the Eastern time I don't know what's gonna happen here Sunday night news you can have a COVID spike 3,000 people in New York out of nowhere and the markets gonna start getting jittery you have more news coming out of China more suspensions more regulatory so anything can happen between now and the open of uh, of the cash session on Sunday night but from now going into Monday at least for now I have to be bullish I'm a little bit cautious just because all these things are starting to kind of compound and when you have 
a market that has been running on fumes and more or less been kind of melting up uh, again since that May 20 remount uh, of the 50 day moving average. You have to be a little bit more prudent. Um, like I said, like I basically told everybody in the webinar um, Friday afternoon, there's so much value on deck this week. You don't need to be long over the weekend just because all these factors are starting to stack up. And I think there's plenty of range, especially in the beta technology names that you can go flat over the weekend, even miss the gap up and still have a gap and go scenario if technicals uh, do uh, do confirm. And that's kind of what I'm looking at. So if you got a you know, gun to my head, 80, 20 bullish uh, sentiment going into Monday session, uh, I am avoiding like I've been talking about for weeks. I am avoiding all the China names. I have no interest in them whatsoever. Uh, they're just grenades. They're literally live grenades in your hand. You just don't know uh, what's going to happen. The one thing that I, I always keep an eye on, how are the stay-at-home stocks reacting to the COVID, uh, to the new COVID strain? And the beginning of the week, uh, Zoom had a nice move, really nice move. They started pounding those $400 call buyers really you know really died down the last couple of days you could turn around and say well you know what it's just resting but again if 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 news is escalating slowly but surely and you see a head count and again i, I understand the total complete argument of that is well it's not about the cases about the hospital cases okay that's a whole different conversation we're just using it for face value for pure discussion so the fact that zoom really didn't rally as we're getting more cases again not the greatest thing in the world uh docu kind of in the same space, right? Stay at home space. Had a nice move when the, when the, when the when numbers started to rise, it started to fall down. Uh, when you have a stock like Peloton, again, had a very, very big benefit uh, to the stay at home movement, did exactly the same thing. So these stocks are really not, quote unquote, while the strain is getting more aggressive, we have to buy those stocks. Well, apparently you don't because the market has spoken. Um, what we want to do, definitely pay attention to this week is the names that, that are, excuse me, the names that are supposed to confirm, we have to see if they confirm. And if the case is no, for example, like a case on a Tesla that was a monster mover uh, for the last two days, if Tesla fails this range for the third time around, you're probably going to get a really big signal in the overall marketplace. Because again, as far as I know, this is the biggest cult stock not named Amazon and not named Apple. So speculation money, for example, and again, gun to my head, I say they break the top of the range. There's no guarantees. But if speculation money has a buyer strike at the top of the range on Tesla, if speculation money comes back in and has a buyer strike at the top of the range of NVIDIA, if they come in and have a buyer strike at the top of the range of Apple trying to reclaim the five-day moving average, we're going to quickly switch buyers very, very quickly. You don't need to get kicked in the head 30 times to figure out the 31st time is going to hurt. All these things are evidence. All these things are data points that we're trying to, we're trying to um, gather every single day. And if we start noticing any red flags on anything we just discussed, our bias is going to switch and we're going to start looking uh, to the downside. That's the discipline. Uh, that's the point of being a technical trader instead of having an opinion, let the market dictate to us what's going to happen. So I'm going to give the bulls the benefit of doubt. I'm going to give Tesla the benefit of doubt. I'm going to give NVIDIA the benefit of doubt and Apple the benefit of doubt and everything else uh, that I kind of watched uh, throughout, uh, throughout the week. Uh, but I will have a very, very short few. I won't have a very, very short leash uh, in having these things play out against me. So let's talk about it. Um, so uh, very, very aggressive week, uh, very, very aggressive Thursday into Friday. Uh, for all you guys who keep on asking, hey, how come there's no videos on Thursday nights? Uh, that is my mental res day. Uh, for all you guys who don't know, uh, I'm trading all, you know, I'm trading all day. I'm speaking all day, literally speaking all day, answering, I'm exhausted by Thursday night. So what I do, I take Thursday off uh, with the video. So there is no video Thursday nights. Occasionally, I will switch my schedule in case, like, if one of my kids have a like a game or something on Thursday. I'll switch it to uh, to Wednesday. But the moral of the story: there is no video on Thursday. So Wednesday session was very aggressive. Thursday session was very aggressive, and Friday we'll talk about that in a second. So this was the move on third on uh, Thursday, right? The Thursday and there was no no video. Uh, in the video I'm still watching this area to confirm never did. 656, 657 needs to build on Tesla 
and Tesla had a monster two-day run. Congratulations for everybody who caught it. Here is the first range here that, again, we talked about the sneaky channel, right? We always talk about sneaky channels. Here's the sneaky channel. It got above the 556 level and just really exploded into the 580s. And here was my, you know, here was my comments. Um, here was my comments for Friday. Uh, monster move yesterday. Keep an eye on the stock red to green. Guys, remember, red to green is cool on, you know, it sounds good on paper. It's not a pivot, okay? The stock still needs to confirm the, the, the previous, previous day's channel. And this is what I wrote. Red to green is unwatched for experienced traders only. Note this is not a pivot. Just momentum needs to confirm 685. And not only the Tesla... Uh, take out go red to green it took out the 685 and went right into supply of 697 we're set up guys there's no you know there is no mystery where the pivot is i think if anybody could you know if you, if you you could be blind and be able to see where this damn pivot is this 700 level is a monster it's either going to get rejected it's going to go back down or if this thing closes above seven i mean look how much room you have so i, I don't it's very very tough for me to turn around and say um you know you know, sugarcoat this. It's either going to explode or it's not, right? That's it. That big level off the top of the range. Again, we'll see what happens there. So Tesla, great, great run on Tesla uh, for two days. Uh, I still like this little UXIN, didn't confirm. Uh, Crocs, not a big move at all. Only went up like 50, 60 cents and then kind of reversed with the rest of the market. Uh, AMD, again, can we talk about AMD, man? So here is the pivot from, 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 uh, Thursday session, right? 98, 75, 99 needs to build. So monster move yesterday for experienced traders. Uh, 103 needs to build. Note, this is a mad big two-day run. On the third day, it usually gets a little tricky. A third day could give you 20, 25 cents or it could give you 20, 25 dollars. And just an absolute monster three-day run. Uh, it took out the $99 uh, the previous day. It took out the 103 pivot for continuation. And congratulations to all you guys who wrote. We're still riding this thing. And this thing went to 107. Just an absolute monster move uh, on AMD. Um, big move there as well. Qualcomm rejected uh, three times. It stopped right at the previous high at 150.5. Never confirmed. Um, let's see, here's a yeah, take on the way, uh, take on the way for AMD. Uh, AMAT was a beautiful trade. Uh, I've been watching AMAT for, it felt, it felt like four years. It's only been a month, but it felt that way. Uh, I caught this thing, you know, really nicely. 140 rejected three times daily. I, I kind of knew it wasn't going to be a big run just because, uh, just because there was a supply zone, uh, right here, the Bollinger Band right here, but it took out this whole channel here at 140, went right to the supply zone. Um, I think if it could reclaim like 42 or so, I think it goes back to this 46, but nice little trade there. Uh, nevertheless, on a on AMAT, so perfect move on AMAT. Uh, Tesla supply 94 actually went to 97, and yeah, not too shabby of a morning. Uh, and then you had snow. I still like snow. Guys, watch this snow. Keep an eye on the snow. It's been rejected now several times off this 275 it keeps on coming up there and it just can't reclaim this 275 level keep an eye on this thing for the future uh mrna nice move there for experienced traders only uh 353 needs to build here was mrna uh it took out this whole channel here at 353 it went to uh 360 obviously a couple of bucks away from its all-time highs but nice move really nice move on mrna as well yeah here goes mrna 355 yesterday's high went to 360 uh fantastic morning again option flow coming in these guys are anticipating right they're anticipating uh the move next week for tesla they came for the 710 730 770 uh august calls so again keep an eye on this thing as well mrna exploding and i believe that is it yeah so that's it so uh, market is set up, right? Market is set up. Again, we're going to be cautious. Um, but again, the moral of the story is if the bulls continue to be this Teflon market, keep going with it until it stops. Let me give you guys a couple of pivots uh, that I do like uh, for next week. Look at Apple. Again, let's talk about Apple. This five-day moving average has now gotten rejected three days in a row. We did see uh, short-term expiration in the August and September uh, expiration contracts. They were coming in for the 150, 55, and 60 calls. If Apple can reclaim this five-day moving average, I think this thing can get back to 150. Uh, even Neo, again, it, it, gun to my head. Listen, you, literally gun to my head. If there's a, if I have a choice between Neo and Tesla, I don't care if Neo goes bankrupt. The, the stock means irrelevant to me. But for all you guys who do trade Neo, 
Uh, this 50-day moving average is a big deal. It stopped there on Friday. If it could reclaim the 50-day moving average, you know, this thing could really wake up. We did see uh, 50 and 55 short-term uh, calls come into the name uh, as well. And for all you diamond hands, right, all you diamond girls, how many of you guys remember that in the 80s and 90s? Diamond girl, yes, yo, my, right? This thing's close. This thing's very, very close. GameStop has stopped at the bottom of the range here twice. Any close, folks, any close uh, below this 150-day moving average, there's like $40 worth of downside. So if the bulls uh, don't defend that level in the bottom of the range of GameStop, it could be lights out, right? Pun intended uh, for the company. So guys, have a great night, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your life. We get no mulligans. Love yourself. Love your family. And with God's help, I'll see you all on Monday. Take care, everyone.